Okay, I've started recording. I should start. Let's try this. <laughs> Do I need this? This is for people that are dialed in. It's just in. for the room, so yeah. if you don't. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you I'm good. probably fine, no? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, this is our uh, you know, public board meeting. We don't have the whole board uh, present right now, which is okay. Uh, some people have to leave already. Uh, other people are sick, unfortunately. Um, so you can Google us on the Drupal Association page. There's little photos with little bios if you want to know more about who we are. Um, but um, I wanted to just kick it off today. Um, the agenda is pretty simple. Um, we're going to talk about a few topics, give you kind of an operational update. Uh, and then we really want to make this uh, a Q&A, you know, where if you have questions, please, by all means, ask us questions. And hopefully, uh, things can quickly become a conversation. Um, the fact you're here is, is exciting. Um, <clears throat> You know, if you ever have an interest in becoming a part of our board, there's two ways to, to join the board. One is to be nominated by the, well, nominated by the nomination committee and then be um, sort of approved or elected by the existing board members. If, if that's of interest, you should come and talk to the nomination committee. So that's Samir, um, Christoph Van Toma, as well as myself. So. Feel free to email me or tackle me or um, whatever approach you prefer. Um, the other, yeah. Um, or you can also get on the board through the um, the community at large role. Um, so that is also documented on our website. So thanks for having an interest in what we do and, and being here. Um, I wanted to say a few words. Um, as you can see, there's a couple of different faces or you know, people that were, are no longer here. Um, so we, we've had some changes since DrupalCon uh, New Orleans. And, and some of these changes are obviously hard, um, but you know, they're also needed or good changes. Um, but I wanted to give a shout out to Megan and the staff because um, you know, they've done an incredible job managing through some of these changes uh, as an organization. And, uh, you know, I've spent a little bit of time with, well, spent a lot of time with Megan and then a little <laughs> bit of time with other people. And I don't think I, I could, you know, I don't think there's a more passionate, loyal, hardworking staff than the people at the Drupal Association. So, um, you know, with fewer resources, they pulled off DrupalCon, which to me at least from, from where I'm sitting is, is being executed flawlessly. Um, and then in other areas, we've even managed to get some real breakthroughs. And uh, Tim will, will talk a little bit about these things. So thanks, guys. Um, yes, thank you. Yeah. And that's it, really. I'm going to give the floor to Megan. Sure. Great. All right. I'll stand and pretend to talk into the mic. Um, uh, so. We have uh, an operational update that we give to the board. I actually do it every two weeks just to keep them abreast of our progress. We're trying to be agile and moving things forward. And um, it will go public after this, but just so everyone can see. Go and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Here we are. Um, so we just give updates on financials and uh, on DrupalCon, uh, some initiatives on Drupal.org, of course. Uh, membership, global training days, and DrupalCon Dublin sponsorship. And most of those topics um, I've asked staff to present on um, so you can get a little deeper dive. Uh, we also provide the board uh, with a dashboard of our different goals um, that we're focusing on for our execution plan and uh, progress towards those goals. And so we have this whole dashboard where um, there's just, you know, Green is obviously it's on track. Yellow is that something's slipping, but we're getting it back on track. If you see red, that means something changed, uh, didn't work out, but we always have contingency plans. And i um, happy to say that it's mostly green. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I'll be making this public after the board meeting along with the, um, 
with the, the video, the recording as well. So you can take a closer look and then we can have more questions online through the blog post that I'll be doing. Um, or you can always email me too, I'm pretty accessible. So uh, just in terms of like operational procedure, I'm asking the board, even though we talked about this for two days in a retreat, by any chance, do you have any questions on our progress? <laughs> Crickets. How are you guys so awesome? <laughs> <laughs> Please, guys. Um, all right, so I'm just going to move on and let me give the floor to our first presentation. And that is Rachel. Let me get your presentation up there for you. Do you want to just come over here? You yeah. can drive. Much easier. I'm going to eat your food too. Uh, all right. All righty. So we're going to give an update on DrupalCon New Orleans. Um, we did a, a longer version of this a few weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago, that's available on the Drupal Association's YouTube channel. So if there's something here where you're a little bit curious, there's a lot more data in those uh, slides in that webcast. So you're welcome to go look that up. Uh, in general, we ended DrupalCon New Orleans basically about the same size as Los Angeles. Uh, we saw um, a slight dip in our training attendance, um, but we also saw an increase in our summit attendance, so it kind of balanced out a bit there. Um, nothing very notable changed as far as uh, job attendees' job titles and roles um, over previous years. There's clearly quite a few developers at this conference, so um, full stack developer is our, our number one job title, uh, and then coming in second is front end developer. Um, our experience breakdown didn't really change year to year, so we kind of have a good uh, estimate on what that, or good predict prediction, I guess, on what that will be uh, for Baltimore. And as far as the industries go, uh, we did allow people to select multiple industries, but clearly um, education, nonprofit, government, and media are the biggest industries that we're working with, um, which isn't. Uh, particularly surprising, I think. Um, as far as financials go, we actually exceeded our goal as far as a net uh, income goal. So we exceeded that by about $124,000, which is great. Um, comparing New Orleans to Los Angeles, we um, were about even. Uh, the one thing that is not included in the New Orleans numbers is um, staff wages and benefits. We pulled that overhead number out uh, for the last uh, year's budgets. So that's the one reason why it may look like there's a big increase. It's really about the same. Um, kind of diving into the more details uh, of how we generated our revenue. Uh, we have obviously a lot of different tickets that we sold and um, sponsors uh, subsidize about almost 50% of the event, which we really, really appreciate. Helps us keep the tickets prices low. And as far as events go, or expenses go, our number one expense is catering, which is not surprising. Uh, we do a lot on uh, event production, AV, internet, uh, Wi-Fi, that type of thing. And merchant fees is another big line item for us. So some of the financial lessons that we learned uh, that we're kind of taking forward into Baltimore is that tra uh, training demand is easing slightly. It's kind of balancing out. Um, the summits are more in demand. We're hearing a lot of uh, people saying that those gatherings resonate for them, um, being able to talk to other people in their industry. Um, we've seen hotel rooms pick up in North America, which is really great. So even though the um, number of attendees has been kind of average over the past couple years, the hotel room is going up, which is uh, great because we are able to receive incentives and help apply that to the budget and keep our expenses low. Um, the events team was able to manage expenses uh, based on the changing projections. So we came in a little bit less than where we were at for uh, Los Angeles, but we were able to um, normalize some of those costs across um, various uh, expenses that could be adjusted. So that was really great. We were able to kind of shift some catering orders and um, optimize our hotel blocks so that we could put um, staff in different hotels and, and kind of uh, recoup some money there. Um, as far as marketing goes, we obviously use Twitter quite a bit to communicate with attendees and potential attendees. Uh, we also used a Drupal.org banner um, and received a little bit of pushback um, from some active community members, um, and we are kind of evaluating how to use that going forward, so that's something we're experimenting with. And we want to say a big thank you to Paul Johnson. Paul Woo! Johnson and Alex <laughs> <laughs> our social media volunteers. <laughs> 
who do a tremendous amount of work for us throughout both DrupalCon Europe and uh, DrupalCon North America. So thank you. And Alex. Um, emails asking large groups to spend money tend to um, trend a little bit lower as far as open and click-through rates, but we do have quite a few people visiting the website, which is great. Uh, we had a smaller team this year, uh, which affected a bit of how much we were able to produce, and we may need to find uh, additional ways to kind of amplify that voice. Um, and we also learned that just hitting publish doesn't give us our best chance at success. So. Um, uh, spending a bit more time on accounting for time zones and when um, when people are going to be seeing the messages as well as various platforms that they will see the message on. Um, I mentioned earlier that we had a lot of success with our summits. So we had three existing summits that we brought forward, the Business Summit, the Higher Ed Summit, and the Community Summit. There's a lot of information on those slides, which I will let you read at your leisure. Uh, we also had two new summits, the Government Summit and the Media and Publishing Summit, uh, which both went really well. We got a lot of really great feedback on, um, and we're hoping to bring forward to Baltimore. Uh, obviously, a big part of DrupalCon is attending sessions. We had uh, a lot of attendance at sessions. We had a couple rooms overflow that was not expected, which is great. Um, so attendees noted that they really uh, valued the honesty and enthusiasm in, in presenters. And they also uh, requested that speakers uh, rehearse more, which often we hear the speakers are working on slides at the last minute. And so uh, rehearsals may, may need a little bit more of a higher priority. Um, and people are loving the demos. Uh, particularly if they're recorded so that there isn't any um, catches if the Wi-Fi cuts out. Um, one thing that we're constantly asked for is uh, making sure that the um, experience level sticks to the uh, sessions. That's something that we're working on, um, making sure that the descriptions really match the sessions and, and just making sure that people are getting what they're expecting. On sprints, we had a great turnout, 517, which is wonderful. Uh, we had 60% of the people there find it uh, useful or very useful. And we had a ton of Sprint mentors. So thank you to the Sprint mentors who came and brought people up to speed on how they can contribute to the code. As far as our general attendee survey, we got lots of great feedback in the comments, but some of the higher level um, information, we got a lot of uh, good feedback about session content, networking opportunities. Um, and then another reason why people would come is their friends or colleagues are attending. So it's always great to invite people to come to DrupalCon. 93% uh, of attendees found the sessions were somewhat or very useful, which is great, and a ringing endorsement of not only our volunteer program team that selects the sessions, but also the quality of the speakers that are willing to donate their time to presenting at DrupalCon. Um, and people enjoyed uh, networking and meeting, meeting up with friends and colleagues, uh, so 87% of attendees felt that that was uh, helpful. Our net promoter score is 53, which is an increase over last year, so that's really exciting. And overall, people really came to hear sessions and learn new skills. Um, we can continue to round out our programming by um, providing more ways for people to connect um, on different topics. And uh, we see that people are really enjoying the conversations that they're having. So again, that's the hallway track. And finding ways to kind of um, create extra places for them to, to connect on whatever it is that's pressing for them. <clears throat> As far as sponsorships go, our sales team worked very, very hard and they were able to meet their goal, which is fabulous. Uh, the sponsors are still really happy to give back, so that was a primary motivator for a lot of our sponsors, but they're also wanting a bit of a deeper engagement with the community. Um, so they're, they're looking for different things that may be able to help them connect one-on-one -on -one with community members. And uh, they also appreciated the efforts that uh, we took towards making them more comfortable and feel appreciated. So Tim Constein on our team works with our sponsor, uh, sponsor contacts. And we put a bunch of his recommendations into place and people really liked that. We created a little lounge for them to hang out in when they were um, a little bit slow at the exhibit hall or when they were tired from setting up their booth. And I think that that went over pretty well. So overall, in general, we're providing what attendees want, which is solid sessions and opportunities to interact with each other, but we can keep building on that and keep providing those opportunities for people to connect with other people and, and be able to collaborate on various ideas and project um, aspects. Uh, we were able to uh, relatively maintain attendee counts with a halved marketing team, so uh, we had a little bit of turnover on the marketing team, and, uh, and we were able to keep, keep getting the word out and keep people um, excited to come to the con, which was great. Uh, we also understand that the city impacts the con, um, so people were really excited about uh, New Orleans and we were glad to hear that. Uh, people came and had a great time exploring the food and the culture and the music, um, and, it, and they really appreciated being able to go out uh, after the con and kind of walk around the city, being in, inside the center of the city. 
So going forward, uh, what our team is going to focus on is continuing to improve programming, um, finding ways to um, add more content for the non-developer audience. So again, about 50, a little over 50% are kind of more of the um, straightforward developers, but we also have a lot of people there that are not developers. Um, so particularly uh, more of the end users of Drupal and um, finding ways to widen the, the appeal and the audience um, through summits and trainings and <coughs> things like that. Uh, we're going to continue to find ways to engage with the attendees in meaningful ways. So um, finding things that people are asking for and also finding ways that we can um, engage our sponsors in those conversations so that the um, relationship continues to be a healthy one. Uh, we, again, we're also going to create more uh, value for the sponsors and kind of simplify the process. So as we've continued to uh, grow the Drupal cons and the sponsorship offerings, um, there's been a lot of different ways that people can participate. And so we're going to find ways to make that even easier for them, um, not only in picking their sponsorship, but then once they get ready for the uh, con and show up on site. And I think as a team, you know, we're, we're working on choosing the strategic changes that we can implement for Baltimore, but also looking beyond that. So uh, we're working with a bit of a smaller team now, and so we have to be really thoughtful about, like, what are the um, improvements that we can really afford to take on and will have the biggest impact for um, us and for the community. So does anyone have any questions? <laughs> That's a lot of words. I don't know if this can be addressed. Also, I've heard smaller team a few times. I did that Megan last. I don't know what other cheeses. I did. <laughs> <laughs> So for how it applies for DrupalCon, we had um, Tina Krause, who was an active member of the events team and focused on DrupalCon, who's no longer with us. And um, we also had some marketing team members leave that were pretty involved in helping us produce content. And so overall, we're working with a smaller team, but from the events team perspective, we're, we're down one person. So. That wasn't financial, that was just... Uh, it was a part of the staff reductions that happened at the beginning of summer as a part of kind of refining the focus for the association. Yeah. Are we looking to have any more, uh, trying to increase our business, uh, you know, have businessmen coming? Uh, uh, like people who are evaluating Drupal? Yeah, any more ways to attract them? Yeah, I think that's something that we're looking at right now, and that kind of falls under that last bullet point of finding things that we can do strategically. So. Um, I think that one thing that'll be key for us is our partnerships. So working really um, closely with um, people who, who know the customers they're trying to woo in and working with them to help not only build something at the event that really speaks to them, um, but helping having them help us get those people on site, right? Personal invitations so that they, they feel really connected and like there's something there for them. Yeah, because I know something that we're starting to look into is kind of like basically if there's a major event coming up, it's actually say say three months before, we start doing a monthly kind of awareness within that, that location to try to. Yeah. And so I'm just wondering if that might be something. Yeah, we can talk about it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any other questions? All right. All right. Well, I just want to say a big thank you to Rachel. So this is her third DrupalCon this year, <laughs> right? Yeah. So we had one in, uh, in Mumbai, India, and then we had one in New Orleans and States, and now here in Dublin. Three very different cultures, three very different events, and it takes someone with a really strategic mind and great time management skills and people, people leadership skills and amazing budget <laughs> skills to pull that off, right, and with the team that's shrinking. And now it's, you know, obviously it's stabilized and she's prepared to go do this again next year. <laughs> so I just wanna say a big thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and now, Tim Pry. <laughs> cool, so um, I'm now managing the engineering team at the Drupal Association, and so I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, what we've been doing recently, and in particular, some new changes that you've seen and some more changes that are coming up. Um, and some of this has been previewed to the board already. Uh, a little bit of it is new, um, but for the community at large, I want to show you guys this as well. Um, before I jump into this, um, there are other details that are part of the operational update in the dashboard that get publicized um, in the board packet uh, that'll come out. 
Um, and so we have other metrics that we're tracking as well, just about the stability and uptime on Drupal.org um, and about keeping services like the uh, update system, Drupal CI, Composer, all running well to keep the development side uh, working. So for information about how all that's going, and the answer is very well, um, <laughs> check the board packet. So, um, but what I'm really excited about is just before uh, DrupalCon, uh, pretty much the week before, um, we got some changes to the front page uh, pushed out uh, and some new tools that'll let us do some interesting new kinds of marketing and positioning Drupal um, to the evaluator audience in particular. So um, the kind of principle when we're thinking about what we're doing next is trying to um, close the deal for users who are choosing Drupal. These are technical evaluators largely. Um, uh, but people who've put Drupal on a short list uh, for a solution they may, may not need, but um, come to Drupal.org and are trying to make that final decision. Um, and so this is part of our pivot towards supporting the adoption journey. Um, and to do that, we're creating better editorial tools so that it's easier for our uh, smaller team to uh, create the content um, that'll support this effort. Uh, we want the ability to experiment with our campaigns um, and how we uh, organize uh, this content. And we're looking forward, we want to use this for um, focused, uh, industry-oriented solution pages that provide the content that tells an evaluator in a particular market how Drupal uh, can be built into the appropriate solution for them. Um, so, just a quick history because I thought it would be fun. Um, here's what Drupal.org has looked like over the past uh, about two years or so. So this was December 2014, a little bit after I came into the association. It evolved a little bit in April of that year. It evolved again in October of that year. That was November. We had a bit of a change. That was around the release of Drupal 8. Around December, we started promoting things like that central promotion for um, membership campaigns or for DrupalCon. And then we decided to uh, make a more drastic change, which some of you have seen. But I'll talk a little bit about um, how we got there and where we, we headed first. So. Um, these are some wireframes. They're a little bit messy. But our older homepage, um, we wanted to evolve into something that more prominently promoted DrupalCon <coughs> as a first iteration, and that became an editable um, and flexible uh, version of the homepage. And then from there, we want to evolve further to provide this promotion for those vertical markets um, and to help those evaluators understand why Drupal is the right choice for them. Um, and so the editorial tools we used to build it are fieldable panel panes um, with styles and things that the our content editors can um, uh, can totally define these pages without engineering effort, um, just to give them the tools to tell the stories. Um, so those tools let us do things like this: create these um, uh, more designed regions. <laughs> This, with Skype notifications, um, <laughs> uh, um, that are used uh, can be used flexibly throughout the site. So, um, for those who like to get into the gory details, um, our content editors can come in, define our CTAs, define our body content, choose the images, choose the graphics, select styles, um, and there's no real engineering effort required to get those up and running. We use this first on the membership campaign that ran just before DrupalCon and is going to be continuing to run. It's running right now. Um, and we used it as well for the new homepage that's up on Drupal.org. Um, so this is going to evolve further, but um, as you've probably already seen, it's live now. Um, it is beautiful and modern, and I would like to especially thank Emily Nouveau over here for helping us um, in, with the design and really kind of kicking off this effort. Um, uh, so it was, it was extremely helpful. Um, and tomorrow we're going to start, and these are non-final mock-ups, but we're going to start looking at um, Drupal for Industries and using these same tools to develop content targeted to the specific verticals. Um, and um, we've already started sort of mocking things up, and we're, we need to get so, uh, a little bit more of a design eye to it, but just threw some things together. Um, so we're looking at um, partnering with um, uh, the creators of key modules in certain areas with people who are experts in, in those particular industries to um, generate that content and help us uh, really promote those, those verticals. Um, any questions? Uh, is it the multilingual for content creation? Or um, that is a really good question. So we are 
So I don't know if you saw around the Drupal 8 release when we started, we, we had that whole sort of subset section and that was a multilingual area. Um, so we've, that was only for the Drupal 8 release area. So right now, um, we don't have formal plans around doing multilingual for say these new pages or for something like the front page, but we have more multilingual tools available. And so for example, um, we're looking at making that available for the Drupal 8 user guide and the new documentation section that's coming online. So we're, we're doing some more multilingual efforts, but at the moment, uh, these initial changes are, are in English. Uh, could we imagine uh, uh, you know, I've had several conversations with people from, um, uh, 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 I say, I had a conversation with the Hungarian community and Ukrainian community, all of whom also operate their own um, sort of Drupal association within their country style websites. So um, if you actually, if you'd like to come to our panel, the D.O panel that's happening tomorrow around lunchtime, we could talk more. There's some, there's some ideas about how to integrate those communities better with what happens on Drupal.org itself. It's a bot or a session? Uh, it's a session. Um, we'll do an update from the, from the Drupal.org uh, engineering team and then a Q&A. I mean, the simplest thing we could do is probably license the content using Creative Commons. Oh, well, certainly that. The import tool could be copy paste. <laughs> <laughs> and with some translation work. Uh, because mm -hmm. yeah, mostly in the API, like, that's yeah, true. It's JSON just copy paste. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes. So you mentioned some, but I really like what you did. And it's a brilliant gap that seems to be good. Sectors or the verticals that you mentioned, how much consideration has been placed on what they are and what I'm they'll be? Made. I don't know what they are, know what they are but in, in saying that these are the ones we're going to talk about, we're kind of placing ourselves in the policy that likely these are the big markets we're trying to attract. Yeah, that's a very good question, and it's something that we've been talking about a little bit internally because we do want to. I mean, Drupal is so flexible and so available for, for potentially anything that we don't want to pigeonhole the software into those markets. But, um, so we're trying to figure out how to walk that balance and how we message these. At the same time, we're looking at the most popular, um, our initial data gathering has been the most popular searches in the marketplace by market, uh, what, what it seems to be people are looking for and trying to figure out how to build, uh, as well as talking to, uh, shops and service providers about who their customers are and who it is that's around that's looking for this. Um, Megan has done a series of interviews with uh, people to say, you know, um, when you're going to Drupal.org, are you finding what you're looking for to tell you how to do what you need? Um, so we're, we're doing the data gathering. We haven't come up with the, the short list quite yet, but we're still working on it. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, we, we talked a little bit about it over the last couple of days. With emerging verticals, the challenge is going to be con like content creation. Mm -hmm. So we have to find partners to be able to, to create content for a vertical that might not have a lot of content that already exists. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, and that's going to be a, a partnership between the association and um, uh, shops or end users who are the experts, because uh, our team doesn't have all that expertise in those in those markets. So. Yes. Uh, are there any, any plans for uh, Drupal? That's a really good question as well. Um, it's something we've thought about in the past and are starting to think about a little bit uh, again. There's some discussions going on about Drupal.org tooling in general and some recommendations that a committee with the board um, are working on um, and thinking about. We don't have any decisions yet, but um, that's a related topic. So. Um, yeah, I don't have an immediate answer about whether it's absolutely on the list, but it's something that, that may come. Yes? You can also publish log on the use cases of performance. We're certainly looking to, to, to include case study content, specific content that would, that would make sense, yeah.
Great. Thanks, Tim. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah. So as we've gone through some changes, um, the engineering team has gotten smaller, although we still have our friends that come and support us. And, um, you know, when you go through those changes, you really have to rely on someone with strong leadership skills. And Tim has certainly demonstrated that and has pulled everyone together and, and helped them kind of reframe their priorities and um, trying to figure out where to get everyone focused. Um, and uh, the other thing, too, he's just been someone I can really lean on. I am not an engineer. And so we go, we just went to the JIRA board. And I actually understood it, <laughs> right? So he's done a great job just bridging that gap for me too. Um, and also I think building new relationships with the community. So just thank you for your, your wonderful work. All right. Come on up, Brad. And now you'll hear from Brad Fields, he knows Marcom and oversees membership that Liz drives and I'll tell you a little bit about that. Sure will. <laughs> okay, I need one of those eyes in the back of the head upgrades, but <laughs> that'll come at another time. Uh, so first and foremost, just because people are always more important than the specific work sometimes that, get, that happens. Liz is a big part of the membership work that happens for us. She's downstairs running the booth, so I want to make sure that her name is mentioned in terms of coordinating so much of the work that we're about to talk about. Also want to be sure that we give nods to Tim and to Drum specifically uh, for a lot of the rollout of the, the campaign that's going on right now for membership. Uh, but we do want to talk a little bit about the campaign that happened earlier this year during Q2. So like any good story, we're going to start with the end. Uh, and the end of this story is that uh, thanks to a lot of the really great work that Liz did, the annual goal has already been uh, exceeded in terms of the forecast. We're at 106% per six, per right now of what the, the forecast goal was. Uh, and who knows, maybe there's still room to grow. We'll see. The campaign itself. So it didn't actually run for all of the second quarter, which also makes it pretty impressive that we were able to exceed what the forecast was. So it actually only ran for about two months through May and June. The heart of the story for this membership campaign was that if you sign up or renew your membership while the campaign is running, you get a personalized certificate. This was true for organizations. This was true for people as individuals. Uh, and we talked about the campaign actually exclusively on own channels. So uh, to the extent that we did advertising, it was advertising on our own channels. This, this wasn't paid social media, nothing like that. Results, uh, everything's looking green. Uh, in terms of new memberships, in terms of renewals, in terms of the overall membership count during the same time period this year relative to the same period last year, uh, and certainly from a revenue standpoint as well. Everything is smelling like roses. If you're doing the math, the certificate number is a little bit higher than the new members and renewals just because some people renewed maybe outside of the exact period, but we didn't have the heart to say, no, you can't be thanked. <laughs> Uh, in terms of bringing a lot of the different pieces together for the campaign, one of the, the core aspects of it was a landing page on association.drupal.org. And then, as I briefly mentioned a few moments ago, there's advertising as well, but again, on our channels, not sort of just spread across the internet broadly. There was a banner on drupal.org uh, letting people know that there was a certificate we would love to put their name on. And the proof is that during the period that the banner was actually running on drupal.org, we saw that it was driving an absolutely astounding percentage of the traffic to the landing page and materials for the campaign. Uh, and also represented a really good percentage of the people who reported where they heard about the membership campaign. Uh, in some ways, it's not surprising, right? Things like social media can be pretty temporal. If you're not looking at your screen, you don't see a retweet or a share, uh, things get past you but just the, the semi-permanence of the banner sort of proved itself, and it's good to see the numbers reflect that. But, especially for a membership campaign, it wasn't all about what the revenue wins were. Uh, we thought there was just good public goodwill and thanking people who referred more than five people for the campaign, so they were thanked publicly on our channels. 
Um, we certainly reminded organizations that there's just a feel of having this kind of representation within your office space somehow in one way or another. Uh, and definitely encourage people to take lots and lots of selfies and share them as often as they could, pictures of themselves with a certificate. Uh, and so what you're seeing right now, yep, is an example of uh, when Liz storified some of the selfies that we collected over a little bit of time. Comparing performance over the last three years, again, uh, things are looking green in terms of the member number, in terms of the revenue number. And what you see in that bottom right hand corner is just the reminder again that each one of those things uh, exceeded what the goal was set out to be. And so right now, there's another membership campaign running. Uh, Tim talked a little bit about this in terms of the tools that are available to, to help that be possible. Um, but the Community Cultivation Grants campaign is what's running for Q3 right now. Uh, you will see a banner on Drupal.org if you haven't already seen it. It's back up as of today. Um, and it's just been really exciting to see this kind of thing come together this quickly, to be very honest. Um, and it's also sort of soft represents the beginning of another project that's on the roadmap, which is thinking about ways to get the Drupal Association's programs more representation on D.O proper. Uh, and so this membership page itself actually lives on d.o at slash association slash membership as opposed to on the sec uh, separate subdomain. And that is everything. Well, at least about Q2. Oh, yeah, questions. <laughs> yeah, questions? so questions? So do we wait the, the new certificate campaign? <laughs> <laughs> If you renew before the next certificate campaign, we will send you six certificates. The overall percentage of the association revenue, you mean? Yeah. I'm actually not sure what percentage of overall. Yeah, like back of the envelope, membership brings in um, $200,000 and our yeah. overall revenue is $5 million. Okay. It yeah. kind of counts. Yeah. <laughs> Five percent. Yeah. yeah. Did you have a percentage of uh, people that actually get a membership with the conferences? Because that seems to be should be. It's not a fixed percentage. It actually ranges. It all of a sudden that's really clear in the mic. Uh, it sort of ranges based on conferences and location. Um, so, for instance, we are here. Uh, in Dublin this week, but we're not doing membership transactions in the booth on site for international transaction reasons, right? So uh, it sort of depends. And there are so many things that change as conditions that we don't see a fixed line always true across but, but conferences. Is there a line when I register for the conference? Yes, there is. I can actually. Oh, do you just mean if people identify that that's. When they, they, they renew during the registration, or something like that. So we had probably about 40 people sign up for either individual or organization um, memberships yeah. through the commerce transaction of buying their ticket. It would seem that would be an opportunity to yeah, we have a lot of people who are coming to the cons that are already existing members, so um, it true. may just not be their time, or, or they may already be on an auto renewal too. Or so. well, they might not know. They might not know. Yeah, that's true. Well, the, which is also yeah. the yeah. interstitial page should tell you if you are still an active member right. or not. But um, not when they're standing at the. No, yeah, then they don't know. That's that's the real reason why when they go up there, they yeah. don't remember. In their minds, they think they're. Absolutely. Yeah, but that was like two years ago. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. You know, we actually still encountered the confusion of, well, I have an account on Drupal.org. Right. Doesn't that mean I'm a well, member? Well, we put it on their badge. Yeah. So, like, if you hold yeah. up your badge, you can see that Tree is a member of the Drupal Association. Awesome. <laughs> 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 Wait, uh, <laughs> I mean, there's a reason. <laughs> we, we can do reprints. Yeah. We can do reprints. <laughs> I'll take yeah. I know because Liz did it for me last year. Uh, last year. Could be expired. <laughs> Within a year. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, I, yeah, I've got a quick photo membership. Um, we used to have a slider which was abandoned, mm. and we've now got like check boxes. Yep. Um, how are we going? Are people still like picking the cheapest one? Or is that improved at all? It's improved a little bit, but it's still sort of trending towards what would have been the left side of that slider. Yeah. Yeah. 
this is a really tricky one because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of responsible for the slide art. I don't think you should do it. It was a bad idea. <laughs> but anyway, um, because I was talking to Shamala, and like $15 is the, is the lowest price point. Like you can pay $15 or I think Five hundred is the top. Four. Yeah, mm -hmm. is the top four. You can choose to pick your membership fee, right? And we've sort of got thirty-five as the top one, and fifty is this is what what this is what generous people pay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but even say fifteen dollars is just prohibitive in in India. Like mm -hmm. it might be trivial in the United States, or you know, if you're paying euros, but you know, in some parts of the world, it's a really big chunk of change. But the flip side is then we've got people. People who are coming from wealthy countries still just pick in the bottom one. So how, you know, I think I don't know if we can help some creative ideas. Maybe have like a big, the big Mac guy or something like the big Mac costs this in your country. You should be paying at least three big Macs. By <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some of those things are definitely things that we've thought about. Absent the Big Mac comparison. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure you get credit for that. <laughs> yeah. 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 The math definitely supports it. Five billion dollar endowment. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, you must capitalize on the numbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Great. Any other questions? Anyone else? All right. Okay. Well, Brad, thank you very much. Yeah. I also want to just acknowledge you. So, he has a nickname called Batman. <laughs> <laughs> but I've decided he's also the superhero Stretch. You know that? Because he is the only person in Marcom, and he is stretched between DrupalCon <laughs> and membership and merchandise and content strategy on Drupal.org and so many things. And that's a really hard role to play. Um, and it's, it takes a lot of not just skill and talent and time management as well, but it requires passion and care for the people and putting the people first to really kind of work through those kinds of capacity challenges. So I uh, just want to thank you so much, Brad. You've made a real impact. <laughs> Okay, well that is it in terms of the updates and just looking at the time. Actually, we're right on time. We have a few more minutes. Does anyone have questions they'd like to ask the board? Um, you know, it could be a free for all, you know, anything you want. Would the board like to ask audience questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I was just uh, wondering if we should uh, develop a connection to other uh, big events. We did, for example, we went uh, in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. They are here. So, because I think we have to drive people who don't know Drupal to Drupal. So maybe they go to other events than Drupal. Yeah, thank you. I think it's a great idea, and we've done some of it in the past, mm -hmm. where we would um, have a booth at OSCON, or we would have um, well, done the kind of stuff you mean. Sorry, we're co oh, co-locating. You mean yeah. versus no, uh, exchanging? Um, then uh, we have a booth for Drupal. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, we've done some of that um, with some conferences. I, I think we can do more of that. <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, maybe interesting to think about. I thought mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea. Obviously, yeah. we have we can have a presence of those couples at like PHP World and some other conferences. I don't know where we formally thought about. Yeah. In fact, we tried to go to events and try to have some events speaking about Drupal in session or something like that. But I don't think it's too long with this. Um, it's that yeah. it's a good idea. We've done them. I would probably say, I don't want to speak for the staff, <laughs> but it's uh, been more like one-offs, I would say, versus sort of a programmatic approach where we have a, a budget and a plan and like somebody really driving it. I don't know, that's at least my observation, but maybe in, I'm wrong. In general, the local user groups have been doing it. So we did, um, we've done OSCON a lot, um, not only uh, well, as an association staff, we did it uh, in Portland, but then when they moved to Austin, uh, a bunch of 
uh, people from the Austin user groups done that. Um, there's PHP world where I don't think <clears throat> we didn't do it officially, but um, other user groups have gone. Um, I know Larry has been a representative there a bunch of times, but in general, I think it's the, the majority of it has been working with Liz to say, hey, you know, user group X wants to go to you know, event Y. Um, can the association like bring like give us swag or any other event material like that? And it's sort of been like, you know, it, it's been I think a decent um, partnership because it doesn't cost the association much money to do that, and it engages local users to organize and put them together. Is there a conference uh, on content management system? Yeah. Yeah. This. Uh, so we also attended uh, CMS Expo mm -hmm. uh, one time. Yeah, in, in Chicago. In there was a hero. Mm -hmm. CMS Garden, was it CMS Garden or something? It was a... Was that CBIT? I think it was in France. CMS, um, CMS, 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 CMS Day. Day. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, I watched for that. <coughs> a CMS Garden is an initiative in Germany yeah. where uh, several CMSs, uh, they share the same rules. They speak about CMSs, open, CMS, open source CMSs. I think they, we should do the conference also with conventional open sources. <laughs> Any other questions? Going once. And I'm going to see with question. And I'm going to have one color. So we worked with the local community <laughs> extensively to develop a brand that they felt represented presented the city and they really wanted to focus on blues. And so we picked um, different blue tones that kind of went with the watercolor theme. So it was, it, unfortunately it is very similar to Barcelona's color, but um, we thought it was pretty. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, it's true, but we like yeah. blue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're blue prone here. <laughs> uh, well, the tooling, the tooling we've talked about is, are figured out by September. Yeah, no, it would be a community. So what he's referring to is, and I kind of, oh, I kind of um, mentioned this a bit on stage, is, and uh, I think it was also in Tim's blog post. We have um, a technical advisory committee that is picking up a very long conversation within the community of what to do with tooling. And um, I was just looking at you realizing like, you should probably be answering this. But <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, it's a, it's a committee that's made up of our board member, Steve Francia and uh, Mo Schweitzman and Angie Byron, um, and they are starting to look at our different options and what the community had said they like in terms of tooling, they're talking to GitLab, they're talking to GitHub, they're gonna pull all this together and their process that they wanna bring it back to the community to re-engage the discussion um, and have this in a public forum so everyone has a chance to hear the pros and cons and have a discussion and then a decision can be made and then we decide how we implement. And obviously that, requires like scoping of resources and understanding funding requirements. So there's no timetable of that implementation, but right now we're in the um, fact gathering um, time frame. So the September is kind of like no real September time frame. <laughs> we're in the fact gathering, but um, what we want to do after Dublin, because uh, we'll be kind of coming out of that fact gathering phase, uh, and it includes kind of understanding what that process will look like. We're going to uh, do a blog post for the community and say, like, okay, here's what we're doing. Here's our roadmap. Here's what you can expect. Um, and then, you know, I'm sure there'll be some feedback of maybe we forgot this or consider this or that, right? So, um, so you'll start be you'll start seeing a little bit more out there publicly now that we have a game plan. <laughs> Anything you want to add, Tim? No. Okay. Difficult one. Um, any updates on what's happening with groups? He has one. It's in the chair board. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have an update. Um, it's probably not everything you'd be thrilled to hear, but right now we basically are just working with one of the LTS support vendors, so it's on the LTS system. Mm -hmm. And it's just, um, so it's receiving um, updates from one of the LTS vendors. That's um, in terms of just basic security. Just in terms right? of basic, basic stuff. Um, in terms of future development, it's not on the immediate roadmap. So, so I, just, I wonder if you might know whether or not, because I think the content, going back a bit, the content strategy people looked a little bit at it 
And the reason I bring it up is it came up in the community summit on Monday, and mm. it was really, it's frankly, quite embarrassing mm. the state of groups of Drupal yep. and the, the last Drupal 6 site, and it hasn't But it's also that, that the community has kind of abandoned it as well. It's not that we're, it's not just that we're sort of, like, as a DA, don't have time to put resourcing into it, but it's kind of like, it's just really old stuff there. The search engine is, you put in, um, someone searched for Israel and it said, did you mean Michael? <laughs> Someone else searched for Germany and they said, Did you mean demand? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, there's been discussion about how we're using, um, how a lot of people are using meetup.com now yep. instead. We had a representative in the room from PHP and WordPress communities, and she said that you know, one of the things that WordPress have done is have a, a sort of business y level account with meetup.com. So they paid for meetup fees for all of WordPress. And I know that individually, lots of commute, uh, Drupal communities around the world are paying for the small sort of thing. So it just struck me as this is something that we may not have the time and resources to actually fix, but I think we need to think about putting some time and resources into what we're going to do, because it's, it's, I think it might be doing us damage, frankly. Yeah. So. I mean, we, uh, we've certainly thought about whether the option is to not sunset entirely, but but um, do it as an integration with something like Meetup as, a, as an alternative. Um, but since it hasn't been on the like kind of forefront, we we haven't made a firm decision on any of that. So, yeah. And there's there's I mean there's a variety of kinds of content because there's not just local user groups. There's also interest groups. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. There's also um, initiative organization actually still happens there. Yeah. And so there's we need to make sure that those things find a home before. Yeah. If what's left is just the local user groups and that kind of thing is perfectly sensible and, and yeah. yeah. So I was basically gonna say the exact same thing that yeah, the the great thing with the local user groups to meet up. I mean we still do a little discussion there, but most of it we just mirror on meetup. But yeah, things like even the core group or different exactly. other yeah, groups. Exactly. I used to be a moderator on there and frankly, I mean it just became so successful of you know, spammy submissions, it was hard to yeah. keep up with. Yeah. And so cutting it down Kicking all the local user groups off and not supporting that might be a way to at least get <coughs> retain the content that's useful or the discussion. Places people are having those discussions about issues I think are useful. Whereas, you know, if it's just meetup announcements, that doesn't need to be there. Yeah, I mean, so uh, probably whatever the solution will look like, we'll wind up splitting off those different categories of conversation. But yeah, so it's, it definitely still makes thought. Okay, one more question. In the back. Uh, something related to community. Uh, would it be possible to promote um, regional events like uh, Iron Camp on Drupal.org based on geolocation? Now, uh, where currently is uh, promotion for Dublin uh, that for uh, uh, Eastern and uh, Central European countries that would be some kind of promotion for uh, Iron Camp? That is an interesting thought. We, I, for some reason, I've gotten like ten different questions about geolocation related <laughs> <laughs> issues on Drupal.org. Um, I, I, to be honest, I haven't thought about that before. It's definitely an interesting idea. Um, part of it, though, I mean, we want to invite most of those local communities to come to DrupalCon, so we have an issue of how much content and how often and when it would overlap. Um, so we have to think it through quite a bit. Um, yeah, yeah I, I don't have an answer. But it's a good idea. Thank you for bringing that. Tim, do you want to talk about Drupal at all? Yeah, well, and of course there's Drupal. Um, oh, yeah, we have there, but um, it doesn't get so it doesn't get that. specifically search for that, and uh, right. it's not so, so easy because uh, our local community page that is for uh, beginner users mostly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the more advanced users are looking for information in English on Drupal. Uh, right. So we okay. Need to get that. Right. That's a good point. Okay. Yeah, we'll think about it more. Thank you. Great. Okay. Well, that concludes our public board meeting. Um, I am going to be posting the recording and the um, board packet uh, on the Drupal Association blog. I'll do a little write-up, and so you can take a closer look at all the materials that we shared today. And a special thanks to staff for presenting and for the board for all their guidance and advisory over the last couple months. So 
Um, and thank you very much for being here and being interested in what we're doing. You're certainly an extension of us, and we're here to support you. So it's great to hear your questions. And if you have more afterwards, feel free to email me. Um, I know many of you in the room, which is great. So. Um, and again, if you have questions specifically on Drupal.org, the Drupal.org uh, panel is tomorrow around lunchtime. It's in the schedule. So please bring your questions. It's mostly a Q&A. We'll do a short presentation, but we're, we're interested in hearing from you. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you very much. If you didn't get lunch, it's outside. And please enjoy. <laughs>